As you all are aware, we're dealing with extraordinary times. Um, and our first responders are the heroes who are out there every minute um, saving lives and helping to stem the tide of, of this disease. And I thought it would be great to talk to the king of the first responders from the great LAFD here in Los Angeles, Fire Chief Ralph Terrazas, taking time out of his unbelievably busy schedule to just talk about you know, what's actually going on what the future looks like, what we can do to protect ourselves, uh, maybe what we can do better and what to worry about and what not to worry about, frankly. Um, Chief, thanks for, for being here and, and taking time. This is awesome of you. Well, Rob, thank you for the opportunity to, to talk to you this morning. I really like your cap. Uh, thank you. Like LA City Fire Department, we're very proud of our department. And uh, we're doing things we've never done before uh, during this pandemic. You know, the, the uh, day one, we started assisting uh, the mayor's uh, people to test the public. And we're used to uh, fires and, and brush fires, high rise fires, earthquakes, but a pandemic is something we've never been involved with before. But I thought to myself, we take an oath to protect lives and property and definitely public testing of this deadly uh, virus is in that category. What do you think the single most important thing people can do? We're, you know, we're, a, how many weeks into this are we now? We're, what, eight weeks into it? So the direction that I've been telling the public is you got to listen to the social distancing guidelines. You know, you should stay at home. You're safer at home. You should wash your hands frequently. If you have to get out in public, wear a face covering and, and maintain that six foot separation if you're in areas like at the market. Uh, where you are going to encounter more people at the market. The markets have done a good job. They've been marking uh, the ground with tape to, to maintain that six foot separation when people check out. Obviously, this is not just for Los Angeles. This is for, for everybody across the country who will be watching this. But what do you recommend people do if they think they have a symptom, think they may have this? Uh, number one, monitor your health. Stay as healthy as you can. Now, if you start developing symptoms, coughing, fever, things of that nature, they're flu-like symptoms, call your healthcare provider and get some guidance. Uh, if there's any doubt whatsoever, call 911 and we'll be there in five minutes. But we really want to minimize unnecessary transports to the hospital because it does expose the patient to the potential for uh, contracting the virus. So I have just a, a crazy question, and it doesn't even really um, make that much of a difference because you should do it regardless. But when you're one is wearing this the mask the, and they're out and about, is that is that for them to not transmit it, or to them not get it, or both? Uh, I'm not an expert, but I've been listening to the experts almost every day, and they tell me it's more so for the person who may have the virus. There's a big concern that many people out there in public are asymptomatic, but they can spread the virus. So if you wear the mask, you're actually protecting other people. If everybody has the mask on, uh, you're better protected. Now, everybody's familiar with that sort of papery mask with the metal clip that goes around your nose, right? That's the most rudimentary one out there, and that's still fine to, to use, right? Anything is better than nothing? Could be anything. Could be bandana, could be anything. Our protocol is when we get on scene of an incident, we give the patient a surgical mask. It's like the one you described. That Im immediately reduces the risk of exposure to a low level exposure. You know, people um, sometimes think of, of firefighters as firefighters and, you know, maybe they show up to an accident. But, but what you said earlier is I find so profound. Uh, as someone who plays a firefighter on television is you swore an oath, right? I mean, you swore an oath to protect lives and property in whatever uh, th that may bring. And, and, and a pandemic being something un unprecedented. What have you encountered or learned that, that you uh, will influence any, any practices going forward? Uh, one thing that we've implemented in the last two weeks, we've been working on it for over a, a year is telemedicine. We're finding that uh, we can maintain and manage call load 
by eliminating these low level emergency calls that are really not emergencies. 911 is supposed to be for life threatening emergencies. So telemedicine allows us to have a doctor or a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant on our dispatch floor. So when the call comes in, and if it's a low level call, the caller can get transferred to the doctor oh, and the wow. doctor can make an assessment. And they use something like FaceTime so they get a visual with the patient. Right. And we're finding that many times they don't need a transport, especially now. When you think about it, it's a better level of patient care. It's reducing the risk of an emergency response. It's reducing the potential for exposure to our firefighters and to hospital staff. And lastly, it's helping reduce hospital emergency room overcrowding. So we're, we're very uh, proud of that program. It's evolving every day. And I, I see that lasting far, far into the future. So obviously this is a time that, that nobody wants to go on any longer than it has been. And uh, you know, just on my end, I've been so fortunate to be able to be in a beautiful place. And but but I think of people who aren't so fortunate. I think of people who are in small apartments, in places where there's horrible weather, uh, people who may be alone. Um, and my heart just goes out to them. I, I'm wondering if if you're you're seeing a side of humanity that that you wouldn't normally see, and and what kind of stories are coming out of the the front lines of this? I am seeing. Those, those positive stories. I found in my career over 36 years now, in times of crisis, uh, communities come together. I saw that during the Northridge earthquake. I've seen that during brush fires. And I hear anecdotal stories throughout the department where our people are delivering food or providing shelter of some sort. That's the other thing about what you guys do as is, is, uh, firefighters, the fraternity that is in in the firefighting world has always been so inspirational to me. And, you know, I've lived through the wildfires as we, up here and to look at the highway and see, you know, brigades coming from all over the country, not just California, mm -hmm. all over the country. It's like, you know, when your brothers and sisters need help, you guys are there. Yeah, I share your sentiment, Rob. I, we have one, one team color on the LAFD, it's oh. LAFD Red. I don't really care what your background is. If you're man or woman or what ethnicity, when the bell goes off, we go. And we're gonna get there as fast as we can. And if we have to go outside of the city to, to Malibu or wherever, sometimes up and down the state, we go with serious intention and we're gonna be there fast. Sometimes we're sending helicopters, 50 firefighters, 50 fire trucks. We go where we're needed and we take great satisfaction in making a positive difference. And I would say to people watching, if you're in, is as inspired by that as I am, you just heard they go where they're needed. Well, we should go where we're needed and where we're needed is right where we are. Let's not go anywhere right now. And it's the least we can do when other folks are legitimately putting their lives on the line um, out of the real world. Yeah, I agree. I see all these uh, demonstrations across the country that they want the restrictions to end. I don't think they're thinking about the long game. This is a marathon. It's not a sprint. If we pull back uh, as a government at the state level, federal level, or local level, we could have this virus continue to spread even worse the first time around. Uh, the second wave is a big concern. So to continue to social distance, to continue to shelter at home, to continue to wash your hands, it's going to pay off. I know it's painful right now, but think about the long, the long term, the long term gain. What's better for society in general? Is there any place people can go if they have any other questions about anything about COVID-19? Absolutely. Uh, go to the website, cdc.gov. Center for Disease Control it has all the information you need about the coronavirus and what you can do to protect yourself. Well, thank you. This has been great. I know how busy you are and to take the time to reach out to everybody, you know, across the country, they get to know you now and know how lucky we are to have you in the position we have you in. And uh, this has been great. And when this is over, you and me on the golf course, put it on the calendar. Absolutely, Rob. Once again, thank you for the opportunity. Good luck on your show. You're representing firefighters well, and I look forward to learning from you on the golf course.
Thank you. Appreciate it. Right. Bump. All right. Bye-bye. We'll see you.